on us today, God. Like you never breathed on us before. Sit on these. Holy Ghost. You got to have the Holy Spirit. Because you are the eternal. Shall yeah. God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm free. God thought I was worth dying for. Amen. That ought to get you excited right there. Amen. Because so many times, you know, we think, do anybody care? He did. He cared enough to go to the cross for us. Amen. To die for us. Amen. So we have to look at it no matter what people, how we feel and what we feel in this earth and how people make us feel and whether we feel like we loved or not, it don't matter. Jesus loved me. Come on, church. He loved me when all my uncleanness, my ugliness, he loved me. Amen. And because he loves me, I'm willing to die too. Amen. Praise the Lord. We just thank God and we give him the praise and the glory. You know, um, I just want to share a little testimony before I get started. I was laying in bed this morning, and uh, I got too much stuff up here, Ebony. You want to help me? I don't know how all this stuff got up here. Amen. 
Amen. And maybe I need the glasses. Maybe you better bring them back. <laughs> Amen. I was laying in bed around five something this morning, and I just began to think about my son and how God gave us two weeks to just spend every day with him before he decided to go home to be with the Lord. I want you to hear me. He decided. Come on, church. He decided to go home. Amen. And I was just laying there and I was thanking God for the days that I went out there and we just sit on the couch. We didn't talk because in my eyes, he wasn't going to die. Uh, that never crossed my mind. Never thought of it. I'm looking at him every day, but it never, I never thought of it. And I don't know why, but it just, that's just me. I believe until you take the last breath and then you can get another one after that. There's hope. There's hope. That's what I believe. And as I was going over in my mind, my phone rung about five o'clock and my friend in New Mexico, I said, what is it? And she says, she's gone. She's in her thirties, her daughter. And I said, okay, how about you? How are you doing? And we talked for a while and in the midst of that, I said, well, I might as well just get on up and start dinner. It's five o'clock. So I got up and I was cutting my greens and putting my food in the oven and all of that. That's what women do. And then I began to think way, way back when Jermaine was all little. I would get up on a Sunday morning and I would start dinner. I would come down to the church at eight o'clock and turn on the air, the heat, whatever need to be turned on, go back to the house. And then I would cook breakfast and then I would get the kids up. And then we would make it to church at 9.30. Amen. It wasn't hard then. It sure wasn't hard today. And as I was talking to Deborah, she said, Ellen, she says, you know, me and my daughter have been fighting. Y'all better hear what I'm saying for five years. She said, but Mother's Day, I got to spend Mother's Day with her. You know, you can bring friends into your life that will separate your family. And anybody that's going to come into your life that's going to separate you from your family, you need to let them see nothing but your back. Sarabosha. Let them see nothing but your back. Amen. She said, but my other daughter, which you've been in a deal with her for five years too, said that Mother's Day, she decided she was going to sit in the car and not come in and spend dinner with me. And she said, I got 45 minutes with my daughter by myself. She called me when she was in the hospital and told me she was in there and we got a chance to talk. And she said, when they called me at one o'clock this morning, the enemy didn't want me to go in the hospital to see my daughter and say goodbye. And I said, well, sister, let me tell you this. Them friends that she got can never take the place of a mother. I said, you will always know in your heart who you are and what you did in her growing up years. And our children make choices when they get grown. We don't have to like it, but they stay choices. Amen. I said, just know that you had those precious moments with her. I said, you couldn't see that that was going to be your last Mother's Day. You didn't know that your conversation was going to be the last conversation that you had with her. I said, but now that's what you hold on to. Not the five years of the fighting and not seeing her or speaking to her. But those moments that you had, that's what you hold on to. And then I told her, I said, for some reason I was laying in the bed and I was just thinking about me and Buddy's time. You know, everybody else was coming and going and that's okay. But I thought about that. But I didn't know that I was prepping to get her in a place. And then around nine o'clock, the phone ring and we lost another one. And I said, Jesus. And I had my moment because it all just took me back to Buddy and my brother. And I said, God, give me strength because I got to get to church. Amen. So we don't know, church. What I'm telling y'all is to redeem the time that you have with your loved ones. 
because the first call that came in after I hung up to speaking to the sister, she simply said, they're getting ready to put him on the ventilator. In less than 30 minutes, he was gone. Redeem the time that you have. Redeem it. Because you don't know. You have no idea. So you just need to die a little bit and get in your place. Amen. In all of the things that's coming in your life that's separating you from your family, I don't even care if your family's ugly, they still your family. Come on, church. Amen. They can be as ugly as they want to be. You just don't be ugly. But you better redeem every moment because you don't want to live your life saying I shoulda, when I coulda, but I didn't. Amen. So I wasn't expecting none of that, especially the first phone call nor the second because I spoke, I spoke to a sister every day. Her daughter been in the hospital. And we're getting better and we're getting better. And then, this, and then the second call, and I'm saying, what happened that quick? So quick, so fast. We don't have every answer to life. But while you're alive, you got the answer if you want it. Amen? Amen? Now, we're going to turn the word today. And it's going to get a little deep. It's going to get a little deep today. Amen? Yes. And a little shaky. Yes. And I just say to the world that is listening... If you ain't in a church, you better get in one. And I say to the church that's in here, if Christ ain't in you, you need to get him in you. Amen? Because I'm going to tell you something. I believe that God is pulling his anointing off of some people. And I sure don't want him to pull his anointing off of me. Amen? Amen? So we're going to go to Luke chapter 14. The theme we're going to use today is what's your excuse? What's your excuse? 2020 gave everybody that was looking for an excuse, an excuse. <laughs> Every church person that was looking for a reason to get out of church, 2020 gave it to you. Amen? And guess what? Churches are empty because people were looking for a reason to leave anyway. Come on. Amen. But it didn't keep you out of the grocery store. It didn't keep you from going to the parties or the birthdays or the graduations or the hangout or wherever you were going. It didn't stop you from going there. But the Holy Ghost is going to breathe on you today and say, God, God is about to take his anointing away from you. What's your excuse? Amen. We can give God all the excuses in the world, but if I serve the God I serve, he's still God of the universe. Amen. 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 And whatever it is, it ain't too big that he can't handle it. Amen. And it ain't too big that I can't handle it. Because what he said, all power, I give it to you. Yeah. Where? In heaven and in earth. Yeah. Come on, church. It's time to be real. First of all, be real with you. When the Lord got through giving me this message on Friday, sitting at Walmart on Australia Parkway, Pastor Barry was repenting. Come on. God can speak wherever you at. I'm in the car and I said, I need to repent. Because I don't want him to take his grace and his mercy from me. Come on, church. I've been hearing this message since I was a child. And I got it when I was a kid, but we're in a different season and a different time. And the word of God said, my word is made new every day. So this message that you go hear is not new, but it's new for this season. And he didn't change the word. He just growed us up. So here we go. I'm going to try to teach, not preach it, because I want everybody to get it the way I got it, sitting under the shade tree at Walmart. Amen. God speak wherever you want to be. He going to speak. Get your Bibles, young people. Luke 15 and 15. Luke chapter 15 and verse 15. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Luke 14, 15. I was like, I got to preach that? Okay. <laughs> okay. 
All these swines walking around here. Come on. Correction. Luke 14 and 15. <laughs> Luke 14 and I can 15. preach it now. <laughs> okay, yeah, go. I might get there before it's over with. Go ahead. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Now, wait a minute. He said what? Blessed is they that eat bread where? In the kingdom of God. So what you're looking for is in the kingdom. Amen? And then he said, if you're in my kingdom, you blessed. What's your excuse? Amen? We're reading. 16. Then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many. Okay. The Lord went to the cross. We talking about Jesus made a dinner. He went to the cross and he gave us everything we needed. And he said, all you got to do is come and eat. All, if, when, you, when you go to a buffet, everything on the buffet is open to you. Amen. And the Lord put a buffet out there for us. He said, if you want some peace, it's on the table. Amen. If you want joy, it's on the table. If you want long suffering, it's on the table. If you want hope, it's on the table. If you want joy, it's on the table. If you need faith, it's on the table. Whatever it is that you need, he said it's on the table. Amen. He said if you want to say I'll never leave you nor forsake you, it's on the table. Amen. Greater than he that's in you is on the table. Amen. And know that the long suffering is on the table. Whatever it is you need, he said I'll built a feast and I invited everybody to come amen. just come and eat and be blessed just come to the Lord and just be blessed amen, amen. but we're reading 17 and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden come for all things are now ready it's ready yes. now you ain't got to wait on the joy just say I got Jesus I got joy but I don't just have joy. I have the peace. The peace that what? Passes all understanding. Amen. You don't even understand why you got joy. You don't even understand why you got peace. But because you came and ate from the Lord's table, you got it. Amen. You have to know that you are already an overcomer just because you sat at the table. Amen. And he said, no weapon formed against you going to prosper. So whatever it is you need, he said, just come to the table and just be blessed. Just be blessed. But 2020 got us out of a place today, church. Somebody, I heard somebody say it's 21. Yeah, and they still in the same place of 2020. That's why I'm talking 2020. Amen? About to get free. You about to get free? Because you ought to be tired of eating from the table of 2020. Come to the table that can give you life. Yeah. That can give you hope. Yeah. That can give you freedom. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here we go. 18. 18. And they all with one consent began to make excuses. Wait a minute. We got 2020 excuses. Got over and got free. And still got 2020 on your mind. You've been seduced with a seducing 2020 spirit. They may take me off the air today. I don't care. I still got New Jerusalem to preach to. It's a seducing spirit walking the land. And the Bible tells me it will fool the very elect. If it was possible. So if it was possible to fool the very elect, the messed up is really messed up. Amen. 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 Next week, y'all will get that. You'll think about it and say, Pastor was right. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, he told him to come to the table. It's ready. Anything you want is on the table. A new beginning. A refreshing it's on the table. He said, but what? It made an excuse. And the world has got all kind of excuses not to get to church. 
We can watch it online. We can watch it on the internet. And ain't nobody got to give me no license. I can preach online and I can get some money and I can do this and I can do that. Where is the Holy Ghost? Where is the anointing that destroys and breaks every yoke? Anybody can name the name of Christ, but as you feel with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So here we got to come to the point that the excuse is not going to work in the eyes of Jesus. Now it may work with you and it may work with you and you and you. But God is saying I'm about to withdraw my spirit off of my people that I invited to the table. Now I'm going to get there in a minute. I just don't want to run ahead of the word. Because I want y'all to see it for yourself today. Amen. Where we at? And they all, with one consent, began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must, I must needs to go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. Now, if you notice here, we'll say, excuse me, and I, thank you, Lord. For, for, he, no, he did not <laughs> give you permission to go. He says, I bought a piece of ground. The ground ain't finna go nowhere. It ain't finna move, and I just ask you to come and sit down and eat with me for a minute. I just ask you for you to come and eat with me three hours on Sunday morning. Three hours on Sunday morning. A Saturday, whenever you go to church, because then people get to hollering, well, I go on Friday. Well, whenever I ask for that, but you gave me an excuse that you just bought a piece of ground that I let you have. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, excuse me, I got to go check on the piece of land. It was there for you bought it. It will be there after you die. Come on. Because they're about to die. A spiritual death. Amen. Oh, I can hear in the spirit all out in the atmosphere today. Hallelujah. Well, if I'm getting on your nerves, then that's the Holy Ghost is saying, get it right. Get it right. We're reading. 19. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. Now, if you notice, you're going to ask properly, Father, I, I, can, you, can I be excused? But you know what God said? I give yourself will. Go ahead. Amen. Go ahead. He said, I just bought some cows. Let me go count them, make sure five of them still there. I'll let you buy them too. What's your excuse today, church? What's your excuse? Your heart was never there. Or else it was, it drove cold. And you didn't know you got to use your mouth to overcome everything. Here we go. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. All right, now wait a minute. We're going to back this up because there's a whole lot in there she just read. Read 20. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. Got married when you should be bringing a woman to the church. Come on. Come on. Amen. He allowed again for you to get married. God allow us to have blessings, but we take our blessings and put them before the Lord. He gives you land. He gives you wealth. He gives you mates. But yet you allow those things that come in your life to separate you from the Lord. We allow people, material things, and jobs, and friends to separate us from God. Amen? When you should be running to the house of God to say thank you. Hallelujah. And then in 20 it says, in 21. So that the servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house being angry. Now wait a minute. God just got angry. He said, I didn't bless you with land. 
I didn't bless you with some cows to put on the land and a woman to go with it. Y'all better be glad I'm saved by right here. And you let the material things separate you from their next blessing that's on the way. Because you don't know what else is coming. Come on, church. See, because God don't never just bless you with some cows. He give you some land. He don't just bless you with the cows and the land, but he give you a field to feed the cows. He don't just bless you with the field, but he give you land and a house to put on the land. Come on, church. And then he give you a wife and some kids because they can work the land. <laughs> Hallelujah. But yet we let the things that God bless us with separate us from the very person that blessed us. He said, he said I, I didn't got angry. That's when he's about to pull his spirit off some people. I didn't gave you houses and land and I didn't gave you a bank account. And you're going to let 2020 put you in a place that's going to separate you from me? The word says this, how can you hear without a preacher? And I'm sorry to the world, but being on the internet and watching it on TV is not what God called you to do. He said, go to the house of God. And if you don't come here, find a full spirit filled house and get in it. He said, you can't hear without a preacher. I don't care how anointed you is. He ain't going to tell you everything. He going to give it to who he commanded that he was going to give it to. And they the one going to speak it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I believe what I read from Genesis to Revelations. And every word be true and every man be a lie. So you better find some preacher that's full of the Holy Ghost. And you better sit there at their feet until Jesus tell you to move. Not 2020. My God. Hallelujah. He said my table is spreading. And I didn't put everything on that you need. Healing, deliverance, hope. He said, and you going to let something separate you? Hallelujah. Internet and, and TV is for folks that can't get up and walk to the house of God. I'm sorry, but that's who it's for. You ain't blessing nobody sitting there looking at something that you half looking at. I'll call him. Honey, that ain't reaching out and touch. God told me he ain't gave me the spirit of fear. Now catch this because somebody going to run with the rest of it. But power, love, and a sound mind. And I hear you saying, I, I got a sound mind. That's when I'll stay at home. But guess what? You ain't been locked up for whole 2020. A whole year. Somewhere you crawled out the door like a worm and didn't turn to a butterfly. Come on, church. God said, I'm angry and I'm, what I'm saying is just a little bit of what God is going to do to you. Because you didn't forgot the cross. You didn't forgot who died on the cross. Who shed his blood for you. Who was beat and wounded for you. Who died for you. You walked away from him. For a loaf of bread. And a trick. Because the devil trick you. The devil trick you. What's your excuse today? Nah, said Elbosha. Ebony, you better read to keep me in my place. He said, he said, what? I'm angry. Don't get art. Don't get God angry. Don't get him angry. Because, honey, your car breaking ain't half of what's about to happen. Here we go. We read him. 21. So that the servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city. Now, wait a minute. He don't need you just in case you, for, you think you all that. And two bags of chips. Amen. See, we think, we think God need us. He's about to show you 
I fill you with the Holy Ghost. And I bless you. But what I did for you, I'm going to do it for somebody else too. Here we go. That's why I'm telling y'all I had to repent. I was like, I, didn't even, I wasn't even reading the Bible. Then when I got home and I read it, I was like, Jesus, this is serious. This is real. God is not playing in these last days, church. He's not playing. All of this stuff going on in the world, we can't see. We live in the last days and you hung up on a piece of land in a car? We're living it. Somebody said, well, ain't the world going to get worse? Read your Bible. That's why you, you got to read the word. He said, when I come, they're going to be doing the same thing they're doing now. So I don't know what you're looking for to happen, but you better know that your freedom is about to be taken. I'll be telling y'all this before 2020. The saddest day in this world will ever happen is when there is no cash money. And this young generation, oh, let's cash our check on the phone. Let's unlock our car on the phone. Let's do this on the phone. Let's do that on the phone. All you doing is giving the Antichrist power. Because he going to run the world by a computer. And he ain't got to look up your address because you already gave it to him. He ain't got to look up your bank account because you already gave it to him. He ain't got to look up nothing about you because you gave it to him. Because what? We so technology ignorant. My Bible still tells me don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. And if my right hand don't know what my left hand is doing, why does the rest of the world know what I'm doing? You better loose that demon and let it go. That's why they give away free phones because they can track you. And I'm going to leave the rest of that alone, but they tracking you in other ways too. Come on church. Everything the young generation do, they put the phone up there. The devil know what kind of food you like, what you like to drink. Where you go minute to minute and second to second and hour to hour. Because you got an excuse for the Lord, but you're giving the devil power. Okay, I'm going to get back to the book. I'm going to get back. Hallelujah. Y'all, this is serious. And I pray to God that every one of us repent while you sitting up here reading this book. Amen. Because I don't want to give God no excuses. Lord, I don't feel like reading your word today. That's an excuse. Lord, I don't feel like praying today. God, I don't like them. Lord, you know, God, I'm about. Uh-uh. Stop giving him them excuses and get on your face and lay out before God. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, go what? Quickly into the streets. And do what? Bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt. And the blind. Now he said, I want you to go get the unsaved, the lame, uh-huh, the poor, and the blind. Those are all the people that don't know nothing about God. He don't literally mean blind, blind. He don't literally mean cripple, cripple, but he does mean that too. But get those that don't know me, that haven't seen the power of the Holy Ghost, that don't know the word of God, and bring them in here that my house will be filled. So if God want his house filled and you going to leave, he said, I'll use the dumb, I'll use the blind, the lame, the liars, the murderers, the thief, and the robbers, the prostitutes, hallelujah, and the pimps, and all of the other mess that's out there. Bring them in. Bring them in. If you're going to give me an excuse, then you go ahead on and give me one. He said, but my house is going to be filled. He said, go get them, church. Your friend don't come no more. Then let me go across the street and get the liar and say, come on and go to church. And put up with the liar while you're on the bench. Put up with the murderer while you're on the bench. Because while he's on the bench, God is changing his heart. God is changing his heart. He said, go get him. Hallelujah. 
And then we, then we bring them in. They need to quit that. You didn't read the word. He said, God said, bring them. I'll clean them up. I'll fix their heart. I'll house them to walk straight. I'll cause them to be able to hear. I'll cause them to be able to do right. He said, but my house is going to be filled. We're giving God all these excuses because we're so saved and we're so sanctified and we're so full of the Holy Ghost. But we pick and choose the right scriptures we want to read. But we never want to catch this one because we preaching and we teaching and we laying hands and we prophesying and the Spirit didn't left us. Then got up and walked out and you don't even know it and walked out. What's your excuse? I ain't got down today, Shaka. I ain't got, I ain't got no excuse. Because I repented, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Here we go. Here we go. 22. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and now, yet there is room. Now, there's still room. Bring in some more of them creepy people. Bring in some more of those liars. He said, I didn't fill them up and the table has been spread it. And the things, the blessing that was for them, now I'm finna give it to those that are lame and blind. Dumb. That don't know nothing. I'm finna give them your blessing. Amen. <laughs> Receive it. Amen. I'm finna give it to them. Because you walked away with an excuse. If you notice when he kept saying, will you excuse me? He never said yes. We can't tell God, God, excuse me for a minute. Let me lay, the old folks would say, let me lay my religion down and come back and get it. Guess what? When they laid it down, they didn't go back and get it. They thought they did. Same way, you know. <laughs> you had to have been raised in the days me and Vaughn was in because them sisters wasn't no joke. Amen? Amen? They was on the churchyard. They whoop you on the churchyard. <laughs> I was like, wow, I'm nine years old and seeing all this. Oh, but I grew up. And the mothers and friends that I thought was filled with the Holy Ghost, when God cut the scales off of my eyes, I was like, Lord, they never was saved. They just go to church. But God gave room to repent. And God has given us room to repent. He said that my house would be filled. And he said, it's filled up. Somebody going to get your place. And guess what? The anointing going to be greater than yours. May not do it the way you did it, but it's going to be greater. 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Now God is saying to the body of Christ, you need to hit the highways and the hedges. You need to compel people, even though they say, I'm not worthy, I'm not good, I'm not clean. God said, bring them in. Bring them in. Because he won't have them filled up. Hallelujah. Come on, we're reading two more. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Now, that's what scared me when I read it. He said, all of those that gave me excuses... Is what, Ebony? What did it say? Forbidden. Forbidden to what? Shall, shall not taste of my supper. Shall not taste of his blessings anymore. Amen? Amen? See, we've been reading this, but did we read that part right there? Because you know why we didn't read it and we didn't understand it? Because 2020 hadn't showed up yet. Come on. My Bible tell me what's going to separate me. I hear in the spirit realm real good when I'm preaching. Sometime he let me hear other times. Amen. Amen. He ain't left me. You don't know if he did or not. Because you didn't get the okay to go. 2020 gave you an excuse. 2020 separated you from your family, your friends, your life. And we bowed to everything the devil said. We bowed. How many of us prayed before we done anything 2020 told us to do? Oh 
We just followed whatever the direction told us to go in, whatever they said do. I love that 2020 because I'm driving down the highway and ain't nobody on the road but me. <laughs> and boy, when they got loose, it's like they had forgot how to drive. I was like, these people really need to go back home. They were all over the place. Come on. I got in my car every day. It's like, whoop, I'm gone. Everybody didn't have to do that, but that was me. I wasn't getting in prison. I had an excuse not to stay home. Come on. Here we go. I ain't talking about nobody. Because you know what? We all different. We all different. I'm talking about church. Amen. Amen. Where we at? 25. And there went great multitudes with him, and he returned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, this, God is not telling you to hate your family, but he's telling you to hate that piece of land, yes. them cows and the blessings that he's given you that separate you from him. Amen? Now he said, if you don't know how to separate the right from the wrong, the good from the bad, when you need to take care of the sheep and the lambs and all of that, the oxen and the land, and how to get the marriage right, then there's something wrong. That's what it's saying. He said, you need to know how to handle the blessing that I'm giving you because it will not separate you from me. Right. Amen? Amen? You can go shopping anytime. You, 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 can, you can take care of anything else. I got to wash my car. You got to wash your car. Couldn't you wash it before church or couldn't you wash it after church? It don't matter when you wash it. Amen? Amen? So he's telling you here, you will not have a part of my house. Amen? You will not taste the blessing anymore. Now that's what it said in the verse up. I don't know about y'all, but I want to be eating joy and peace the rest of my life. I want to be eating mercy and grace the rest of my life. I want to be eating hope the rest of my life. The pleasures that God has given me, I want to enjoy them in their place. Amen? 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 So he's saying here, you need to deny those things that got you separated from me. And some will say father, mother, wife, and all of those. But that's what he's saying. What has you separated from me? You need to uh, let it see you back. And walk away. We're reading one more verse and we'll let y'all go home. 27. And whosoever doeth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now he said, you cannot be my disciple. All of them people that gave God those excuses, they got a pink slip. <laughs> they got fired. They got a pink slip. And I don't think none of us need a pink slip today. But I want to be in place when the table is spread at 24-7. I want to go in and eat anytime I want to eat. I want to go in and get my blessing anytime I want to go in and sit down at the Lord's table. I don't want to say, you know what, Father, you didn't went on the cross and died for me and hung there, you know, and, and, and you were stripped and shamed before the world and blood was streaming down and I'm going to walk away from you for a piece of land? Come on, church. He said, you got to deny all for me. That don't mean mistreat your family. That means get your life in order. That's what that means. Because I need you. If I didn't need you, I would not have replaced you. Y'all better hear that. Let me say that again. Because I'm not good at repeating things when I'm under the anointing. What did I say? If he didn't need you, he would not have replaced you. 
so I know I can be replaced. And every one of you better know it. So we can't keep giving God all these excuses. Lord, I, I read my word tomorrow. I'll pray tomorrow. I'll be nice tomorrow. I, I, I'll do this tomorrow. It is no tomorrow in your life. When God withdraw his anointing and his spirit off of you, you are a walking dead person. You have no peace. You have no joy. And we in this place now, you know, every material thing makes me happy. So you think you're happy, but that's happy. Even, uh, you know, a piece of bread will make me happy with some garlic butter on it. But it ain't going to last. You need some joy. Everlasting joy. So here we are today, church. God is saying, I'm about to withdraw and pull my spirit up off of my people if they don't get in place. If we don't get busy about God's work, what is your excuse that you can't do what God has called you to do? I hear somebody say, I don't know what he called me to do. Sometimes it's just walk up and give somebody a hug. See, it ain't got to be no great big old thing. Sometimes he just wants you to just say hi or smile at somebody you don't even know. Come on, church. You don't know what a smile will do for a person because you don't know where they've been and you don't know where they at. Hallelujah. You don't know what a hello will do for a person. But yet, you, I don't feel like smiling because I'm mad at my mama. Child, you better be careful being mad at your parents. Amen. This is what the word of God is saying to us today. He said, I'm not giving out no more excuses. It's time to be busy and sit at my table and get blessed. 2020 is over. We're going to 22, 20. We're going to 20, 21. We already halfway through the year. And we holding on to 20 because we looking for an excuse before 2020 showed up. So I got it. No, you didn't get nothing. You lost something. That's what my Bible just told me. The Bible tells me I will not put new wine in old skin. I'm not going to pour my anointing back into some mess. I'm not going to do it. So the Lord is telling the body of Christ today, you have no reason to have an excuse because I'm going to pull my spirit from you. I can't say that enough. And then what you going to do? You'll still be faking and shaking like you was before. Amen. Amen. But today is the day that we ask the Lord to refill us with the bottle of wine. That new anointing. The Holy Spirit. Because we can get to where we need to go. I don't want to give him no more excuses. Because excuses will get you in trouble in the earthly realm as well as the spiritual realm. Amen. If you're not saved in this house, we're going to ask Ebony and Trina to go over there. If you're not saved in this house, if you're not saved out there, wherever you're at, you need to make Jesus your choice. You need to give, him, give your heart to the Lord. Don't wait and keep giving God excuses. Don't take the time to lose your soul while you plan with your piece of land and their material things. But give God the glory. Give him the glory and give your heart to the Lord. Is there anyone in the house that's not saved? Then we're going to start. We're going to take our communion. Then after the communion, we have a testimony that's going to come forth. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't give God no more excuses, church. Because they don't work in 2020. They don't work in 2021. God is saying enough is enough. I've given you so much life. I'm going to pray and then they're going to stand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Lord God, for your word. I pray, God, that the word has not gone void into any ear. And, Father, that we just don't 
let it lay dormant in us, but we get up and begin to move by the word of the Lord. And Father, we ask for forgiveness for our shortcomings and our disobedience and our rebellionness. And asking you, Lord, that you fix us and mold us, oh God, the way that you want us to be. And we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to ask everyone on this side to stand and everyone on this side and the back to stand and just come. Brother Roy, I'll get you going. The blood Over here. Jesus. It will never lose its power. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood. Say, hold the blood, hold the blood of Jesus. It will never lose its power. I know it reaches, it reaches. The highest mountain, and it flows, oh, it flows to the low, lowest valley. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood that gives me strength from death. Scripture says, as often as we do this, do it in do it in remembrance of Jesus going to the cross for us and dying, giving His life, giving His life for us. Remember the the beatings that He took for us, the lashes on His back, the piercing in His side, the nails in His hand and His feet, the crown of thorns on His head the people making fun of him but he went on and he hung on that cross for us they gambled at his feet but he never lost his faith he never lost his hope and so he said as often as you do this do it in remembrance that I did this for you that you could have the greatness in life and a better life and that gives you the right to the kingdom of God amen Amen. So it said to, to those of you that are guests in the house, we do. The, if you have any special requests for the Lord, tell God, I'm taking this for a healing. I'm taking it for a neighbor, a friend. I'm taking it from whatever whatever's going on in your life, because He went to the cross for that too. Amen. Amen. So in 1 Corinthians 12, 11, and 24, and when they had given thanks, they broke it said, and we're going to give thanks right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this cup that represents the New Testament and the bread that represents your sons and broken body. And Father, we just ask you, Lord, that you forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings and Lord, all the things that we've done that hasn't been pleasing in your sight, Father, we just ask you to forgive us now in the name of Jesus and make us worthy, O oh God, to drink of this cup and eat of this bread in Jesus' name. Amen. Children, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I ask for forgiveness for my sins and make me worthy to drink of this cup 
and eat of this bread in Jesus name and it says that it taken in 24 take and eat but this is my body which is broken for you and they did it in remembrance of him let's eat together and after the same manner they took the cup sub saying this is the cup of the New Testament and we're the New Testament church Jesus died for the New Testament church in my blood this you do drink it in remembrance of me and let's drink together and the ushers will take it up you can be seated in the Holy Ghost I'm going to ask everyone be seated in the spirit and the ushers will take up your cup and we're going to ask the sister Cinnamon she wants to share a testimony with us and then we're going to give this to brother Jermaine Amen. And, and I just want to say, I, it, you know, I go through the service every Sunday. I go back in my mind and I read, go through the service. And last Sunday we had a guest and we forgot to ask the guest to say something. And Sister Tony, would you tell Sister Betty, her friend that came, we're sorry we looked over her last Sunday. Amen. And, and if somebody's in the house as a guest, wave your hand at us and say, you missed somebody, Pastor. Amen. Because we all is a body. It takes all of us to do these things. Amen. And so, uh, come on, baby. Praise God. My name is Cinnamon. Um, I just wanted to share a testimony. Um, we've all experienced things in life where it just brings us closer and closer to God. And it opens up our faith. It, you know, we believe. And it just makes us stronger. And I talked to Sister Tracy about a month ago. And she was like, Sister Cinnamon, you need to give a testimony. Um, She's like, we don't testify enough. We don't share our, our blessings and our struggles. And the reason why I was like, and ever since that day she said that, it's been on my mind. And I was like, you know what? They, the, the church family, my family, we need, need to hear this. Um, I needed surgery. Um, I had a fibroid that was the size of a grapefruit in my body. And the day before surgery, I was here at the church and I was not worried. <laughs> I was more so nervous, but I was not worried. I knew I was covered in, in his blood. We prayed um, for over his, the doctor's hands that everybody would take care of me exceptionally well and that I will recover. I had to recover for 10 weeks. I'm still recovering. But what was the beautiful thing about that even hours after surgery, they made a decision on, on my lower abdomen. I got up and walked. I got up out of that bed and I walked. Of course, I had a pain medication. <laughs> but it was, God was telling me, get up and walk, not lay here. You know, and I, I got up and I walked and the nurses were like, wow, you just had surgery. They just cut on you a few hours ago and you got up and walked. I said, God told me if I'm going to get up out of this hospital, I got to get up and walk. <laughs> and um, even then, I knew I was sore. I was in pain. But it was God talking to me that whole time. Say, um, don't get comfortable in this bed. We're going to get you up out of here. And the next morning, the doctor came in, uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, and he said, I heard you have been up walking. And I said, yes, sir, I've been up walking. And he said, "If you, I don't need to try to keep you here. If you can get up and walk and eat breakfast and go to the bathroom and take a shower, I'll relieve you. Four hours later, I was sitting on the edge of the bed, completely dressed, showered and everything, <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> and, but I also knew this, 
when God told me to get up out of that bed to walk, he said, you know what? I gave you strength to walk up out of here. Give this bed to somebody who's in a worse condition than you are. You know, beds are in the hospitals. You know, there's somebody me who may not been able to walk, and they might really needed that bed. So I got up, I walked out of there. Uh, Matt came and the doctor called Matt, and he came and got me. And since then, get up and go walking. And he was like, you had surgery. I was like, because God told me to get up. Your body don't get well sitting still, you know. You got to move, but I just wanted to give my testimony and let you guys know that. I mean, oh, God is a healer, amen. I mean, enjoy that word from Pastor. Amen. I, while she was preaching, while she was preaching, I heard this song. Get right, church, and let's go home. I know that's home. Get right, church, and let's go home. Get right, church. Oh, get right, church. Get right, church, and let's go home. Guess what, y'all? Oh, I'm going home on the morning train. Oh, I'm going home. Yeah. Why am I catching the morning train? Because the evening train may be too late. Oh, the evening train. Hey, oh, the evening. Oh, the evening train. Evening train may be too late. Oh, get right, church. Get right, church. And let's go home. Oh, get right. Oh, get right, church. Oh, get right, church. Get right, church, and let's go home. Amen. I heard that. I heard that while she was preaching. Amen. <laughs> Man, she preached that sermon. Amen. Amen. And those of you that didn't want to hear it, you heard it anyway. Amen. And we thank God. Amen. We need more preaching like that. Tell the truth even if you don't like it. Amen. No matter who you offend, the Bible says preach in season, out of season. Rebuke, reprove, and exalt. That's what it says. Amen. And that's what preachers have to do. Amen. Stop worrying about feeling the pews and just tell the truth. And we thank God we got a pastor that tells the truth. Amen. Put your hands together for our pastor. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our pastor. Amen. Let's not forget uh, this Sunday coming is the second Sunday which is Grandparents' Day, so all you ladies, wear a hat, amen. If you don't like to wear a hat, just, just do it just for a few hours, amen, amen. Also, it's also Youth Sunday, so the children will take over the service, amen. They'll, they'll do everything but preach, amen. So we're asking all the parents to have their children here Saturday, Saturday at 3 o'clock. That way they can get their choir songs together and whatever else they're going to be doing, amen. So if you can have your children here Saturday at 3 o'clock, and if we get a little long, I'll feed them. Amen. Pizza's cheap. Amen. We'll buy pizza for them. Amen. And if they need a ride, let me know Friday. Amen. Or early Saturday morning, and I'll make sure we get them picked up. Amen. Sister Mark. Amen. So let's keep them in prayer. Amen. As they travel. Amen. To Texas and back. Amen. Anybody else want to share anything before we leave? Amen. Amen. Our guests. Oh, we have two guests in the house. Amen. You guys just stand and just tell us who you are. Brother Jemai. Hurry up, son. Praise the Lord. My name is Ishmael Davidson. Um, me and my wife, my beautiful wife, uh, from Detroit, Michigan. But well, I do have a little testimony uh, for today. Um, 
we experienced a very, very traumatic um, um, a house caught on fire for about two or three weeks ago. Uh, we had to jump out the window. Um, so um, we were here to, to stay. Uh, we were with her mother, which is my mother-in-law. Um, but to my testimony is that when we lost our house, we lost uh, not much everything, but majority everything. But the type of individual I am, and I was like, I lost this stuff, I gotta get it back as soon as possible. I don't care what it takes, and if it, whatever it takes. But I, got, I have the Holy, Field, Holy Ghost filled in me, and I just heard God said, be still. Don't move, let me do the work. So we stand on faith right now so we can get a house, and for my two, three kids, I have my oldest, Anaya Davidson, Jeremiah, then Anaya Davidson. So I'm just gonna listen to the Lord and just be still and let the Lord work for me. Amen, that's the best way to do it. Let God do the work, amen. God bless you, thank you guys for being with us today, amen. Anyone else? I believe that's it, stand to your feet. Amen, we're going home, we want you to be safe. Tomorrow, you know what I mean? Holiday. Amen. Also, real quick, I ain't discussed this with Pastor, but she'll say yes or no later. Amen. We're going to move choir practice to Wednesday. Choir practice to Wednesday after Bible study. Amen. I'm tired of tying up my Saturdays and y'all don't show up. Amen. So choir practice will be on Wednesdays after Bible study. And if you would like to be part of the choir, Wednesday might be an easier day for you. Amen. Be here Wednesday. Amen. You're supposed to be here at 7. But if you're going to be part of the choir, be here at 8 o'clock. Amen? I got to drive from 19th Avenue in the Indian school on that day and make it here so I know you can too. Amen? Amen. Any other? Anything else? Amen. Give our musicians a hand for laboring with us. Amen. Anybody had a birthday this week? Any birthdays this week? We got one birthday. Anybody else? We got one birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy. Now, if you want to watch this sermon today that Pastor preached, you can go to Facebook to the New Jerusalem Ministries homepage, or you can go to New Jerusalem Ministries Buckeye on YouTube, and you'll be able to watch it. Amen? Hit like and share it to a friend that need to be at church. Amen? Uh, somebody that's supposed to be at church, share it to them. Amen? Amen? I want to see, a, I wanna see you know, at least 500 people watch it this week. Amen? Let me say that that works because I got friends all over. And I, I, the other day I looked at it, it was like two people had looked at it. And by the time I sent it out, there were 60-something people that already hit it. I don't know if they watched it all or not, but they, they hit it. So, I mean, if we want, we need to do our work. Amen. We're not trying to grow the church. The Holy Ghost will do that. But we got to let the people know there's a word that's in season right here. And I don't pat myself on the back. But that naming and claiming stuff that's over and all this prosperity, it's about souls, church. And it, we got to preach the real word of God. And so if you got five friends, share it to the five. And I can guarantee you they'll share five. And, and if we would just take a minute and just do what God would have us to do. Because when I stand before the Lord, I got to give him something. And he don't want to know how many people I laid hands on. He don't want to know how many souls. That was that was to the kingdom of God. So we got to do our work. Amen. 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 Dear precious God, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us to be here together, God. Lord, we thank you for the word that we heard today, God. Lord, touch our pastor, God. Give her the strength, God, that she put out, God. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Now, God, touch those that drove near and those that drove far, and keep us in all your ways. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Don't forget you Sunday. See them Saturday here at the church, three o'clock. And don't forget to wear your hat, all you ladies. God bless.